Well, good afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope everybody is having a good day. Um, we're pleased uh, to be working with um, a whole bunch of folks uh, during this pandemic, and uh, we've been um, fortunate to be able to partner with our uh, other colleagues at the other chambers and CVBs in the Grand Strand. So special thanks to Cheryl Kilday at North Myrtle Beach Chamber and CVB. Uh, and we want to thank all of you for being with us today. Um, it's uh, my honor to introduce our friend, uh, TripAdvisor Executive Scott Caulfield. Uh, Scott manages the Central and Southeastern region at TripAdvisor, where he helps destinations and nonprofit attractions gain exposure to the site's 490 million monthly travelers. Uh, Scott has 20 years of digital marketing experience and that has enabled him to work with hundreds of brands in the travel sector to help them navigate the ever evolving world of the online marketing space. Scott is a member of several professional travel associations and he speaks to groups across the US on how to get the most out of TripAdvisor. Scott himself is an avid traveler and he has traveled through all of the region that he manages and he enjoys sharing his experiences with travelers on TripAdvisor. He is based in the Dallas Metroplex, where he lives with his wife, Laura, and their two children. And again, we're sorry we can't see Scott um, in person here in the Grand Strand, but we're super happy that he's here with us today on this webinar. So welcome, Scott, and thank you for sharing uh, your insights with us today. Excellent. Thank you, Karen. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to do it. It's, uh, it's, it's almost as good as being there, but really not nearly as good as being there. Um, you know, I was, uh, you know, thinking back, uh, you know, with this being just such a weird year, 2020, uh, with the, uh, you know, with COVID and the pandemic, um, I will say this, as someone from Texas, I have been to South Carolina three times this year, and that far outranks any other state I've been to this year. So um, I hope that in, in sharing that fact with you guys, that you'll, that you'll hear, you know, information from someone who not only, you know, comes from a position of experience with, you know, with TripAdvisor and working in the travel and tourism sector, but someone who really just, you know, has, has a heart for your region and really, um, you know, really loves uh, South Carolina, you know, from the coast all the way, you know, all the way inland and back. Although I will say that all of my trips to South Carolina have been in the coast and the majority have been to the Grand Strand region. So anyway, <laughs> all that to say, um, you should be able to see my screen here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to talk through um, our new Travel Safe initiative. This is something that has been, um, you know, that we've been working on for, you know, for quite some time, you know, starting when, you know, when the COVID-19 hit and really wanted to make something where our partners and our users could, you know, find the information that they need from, uh, you know, from hotels, attractions and restaurants and then our partners, you know, the, the businesses listed on the site can have a way to communicate what they're doing to, you know, to help make the experience safe for visitors and guests, um, you know, during, you know, during the pandemic. So uh, with that, I'm just going to take you through a, you know, through our agenda here. We're going to do our quick introduction. I've got some COVID research that I'm going to share with you, just some, uh, recent stuff. In fact, some of it uh, was um, released to us internally uh, just a couple of hours ago. So that's pretty exciting. That's uh, the one thing that we've learned through, uh, through all this is that COVID research um, has a very short shelf life, but man, when it is fresh, it is very fresh. Uh, <laughs> and we're, I'm going to take you through an overview of Travel Safe, and then we're going to leave some time at the end for, uh, for Q&A. Um, also, too, I am going to make this presentation available. So, um, you know, as you're taking notes, as you're writing things down, if it's on the slide, um, you know, you don't have to write it down because you will be able to access a copy of this afterwards. So with that, let's go ahead and just uh, and jump right in to some current COVID research. Um, one of the things that we've really felt, you know, you know, really felt was important at TripAdvisor when, when, COVID started to hit was, you know, being able to be a voice of, you know, research and information that's relevant, not just to our users, but really across the entire um, travel landscape. Because, 
uh, you know, we, we feature the most, you know, darn near the most restaurants experience and hotel experiences at hotels uh, and in most markets, including and especially the U.S. and North America. We're the, you know, the first or second most visited travel site in, you know, in the country. And so we feel like we're positioned for that. We feel a responsibility to, you know, to tap into the hundreds of millions of people uh, who are travelers who are on our site every month to, to really, you know, A, study their behaviors and B, hear from them through, you know, through targeted survey research. And, you know, the other, you know, the other reason for that, you know, that we, you know, we really feel a, you know, a purpose in doing that is because the perception of TripAdvisor compared to other sites is extremely positive in terms of, you know, in terms of user trust, in terms of people trusting the information that they see on TripAdvisor. And that's not just because of TripAdvisor. That has a whole lot to do with those of you who are, who are tuned in watching me right now. Uh, because you know you're you're being diligent with making sure your information's current on your listing. You know you're responding to reviews. You're you're taking action on uh, the feedback that's left for you. So this level of trust that you can see here on the screen, uh, that's you know that's an equal you know equal share between you know between us as the platform um, and our you know policies and guidelines with you know with the content we allow. But it's also you know it's also a huge you know pat on the back to you as, as the, you know, you know, millions of businesses are listed on the biz, on the site as, you know, making sure that you've got current information and that you're, you know, you're staying updated too. Um, so when we get into the data, you know, one of the things that we, we identified is we identified five phases of travel recovery. Um, you know, and I think as you, as you read through this, you'll kind of see, you'll see how this goes. You can kind of maybe even mentally, you know, time and date stamp some of these here. Um, you know, the first one, you know, the first phase is decline. You know, all the, you know, all the news is, you know, you know, starts spreading rapidly, you know, and that, you know, for many of us was, you know, the middle of March. Um, you know, I was, I was actually uh, out of town traveling with some friends uh, when, you know, when everything kind of, for lack of a better term, got real with COVID. And, I was, you know, monitoring my email at work and just seeing all kinds of new, you know, messages coming in and getting texts from coworkers and things like that. Um, and that's when, you know, mid-March is really when everything started to, started to do decline. Um, and then, you know, the plateau. And that was, you know, for us, that was, you know, kind of mid to the end of April. We feel like the plateau hit its, you know, you know it plateaued, the, the decline plateaued at the end of April. And started, you know, after that, we started to see some, you know, some increase. And that was, you know, that takes us to the third stage here, the emerge stage. Um, you know, as things begin to pass or as, you know, in some cases, as we just kind of normalize our lives to, you know, living within a pandemic, um, you know, restrictions ease and people start to venture out again uh, locally. Um, and then, you know, from there, it... Uh, transitions to the next stage, which is domestic. You know, and that's when confidence continues to grow. Uh, people feel more comfortable traveling again, whatever that looks like, um, and begins to, you know, begin to travel within, you know, within their own country. And we're seeing a lot of people, and I'll show you some information on this here in just a minute. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of people on the site who are really um, interested in, you know, in going on, you know, going on some, you know, shorter trips, you know, shorter distance trips. And we're seeing people doing longer distance trips for that matter. Um, you know, one of my three trips to South Carolina from here in Dallas was a road trip about a month and a half ago. So people are venturing out uh, further than you might think too. Um, and then the last, you know, the last stage, um, you know, the last phase is international. And that's when people are once again feeling comfortable traveling abroad. Um, yeah, and that's, you know, we're not quite there yet, although we are starting to see sentiment and traffic on the side of people looking at other countries uh, and really any combination, not just people in the U.S. looking at other countries or people in other countries looking at the U.S. or, um, you know, people in Europe looking at Asia, etc. We're starting to see an uptick in that, but we are far from there. Um, you know, one of the things with the, you know, that, that can be the, uh, you know, kind of be the, the thorn in the side or of, uh, you know, of these phases that can kind of uh, derail the phases is the dance, as they call it. And that is, 
Um, you know, the dance would be <laughs> when, you know, we get to the emergence and then there's a spike and then we kind of go back to the plateau. Uh, and that's, you know, that we've kind of seen the phases kind of bounce between two, two, three, and four on here. And, you know, and that's where, you know, we feel like we are now is between three and four based on our data, based on our site research and our own data, when uh, people booking and, you know, where they're booking versus where they're from, uh, what they're looking at and, you know, what their behaviors are. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing, you know, we're seeing kind of a, you know, we're kind of on the line between, you know, between three and four, between emerging and then, you know, domestic, you know, domestic travel. Um, you know, we're seeing very few markets that are kind of left in that decline or plateau stage, although, the, you know, there, there are pockets of that that, you know, the quote unquote dance brings, you know, brings about. Uh, in terms of travel, traveler focus, I touched on this a second ago. Um, it's a lot of travelers are focusing on shorter trips to destinations closer to home. Um, you know, some of the stats here, you know, one of the things I would call out from this um, that I feel like has been, you know, is a bit of a silver lining to, to COVID. And certainly, um, you know, certainly COVID is not something that has been a, you know, super positive for any of us. But a, it just in terms of silver linings, finding the bright side of it is that, um, you know, there, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of travelers who are saying that they want to go somewhere new when they're thinking about where they're going to go next, or even somewhere that's off the beaten path. And what that means you know, for you, you know, for you all there with all the communities there in the Grand Strand is that, um, you know, there's a huge opportunity for discovery and, and new visitors. Um, you know, you're not, you know, you may not be breaking any visitation records, but, um, you know, you will hopefully from this capture new visitors and convert them into loyalists um, because of COVID. And, and, you know, my, my hope and my thought in this is that, you know, years from now, when you know, when we all look back at, at COVID and and hopefully laugh, uh, is, is that you know we'll be able to see that there were a lot of new visitors and a lot of people who would have never discovered certain destinations were it not for the challenge of this pandemic. Um, you know, in terms of the types of trips people are taking, it's mostly with you know mostly with family, significant other. I mean, you kind of lump those two in together. In terms of the, you know, the planning windows, um, you know, we're seeing a, you know, a bigger, you know, a bigger surge of travelers who are, you know, planning and searching travel on the site. This is data based on behavior, you know, user behavior on TripAdvisor. Um, you know, planning a week or less out is, you know, is really one of the biggest growth areas. And it's one of the areas where we're seeing a lot of the activity, um, you know, there's still growth across the board with, you know, with any of the, uh, you know, with any of the periods there, but, you know, the short term, uh, short term visitation is really, you know, is really where we're seeing the, you know, the biggest growth overall since everything plateaued. And this is data, um, you know, this is data that was pulled uh, this morning, actually. So uh, and this reflects domestic travelers within North America, by the way. So research, some research study information here. Um, you know, when, you know, consumers are selecting a destination where they want to go, um, you know, it's, you know, the things that are, that are important and these indices here, these indexes, the way to read those is, you know, a hundred is kind of the baseline. If, if some, if an, if an index score is a hundred, it means you're pretty much average with the rest of the U S population. So, uh, you can read these as, you know, these individuals being, you know, 47% more of this mindset compared to the, to the average American or 35% or 30% more, respectively. So, um, you know, the, you know, the, the things that they're seeing, you know, that the travelers are really, you know, seen as most important is low number of COVID cases. Uh, you know, people are always looking at their, you know, looking at the news, looking at apps and trying to, you know, decipher that read the tea leaves on that. Um, and then, you know, the other one is destinations with high engagement and hygiene and sanitation practices. I had a very challenging conversation just the other day with, uh, you know, with a uh, larger uh, domestic, you know, U.S. destination who, you know, is deciding to stay very quiet through all this in spite of getting a lot of research. And, 
you know, what, you know, what our guidance to them was is like, okay, that's fine. If you're, you know, you don't have to spend money, but make sure people know that if they do decide to come there, it's going to be safe, that you're doing the right things. Don't let your silence communicate a lack of preparation, in other words. Um, and then the other, you know, the other thing that's, that's also really important to travelers when they're, you know, when they're looking, um, you know, they're looking at places and activities is, um, you know, is that the, you know, is the ability to avoid crowded places when they're traveling or, you know, some sort of crowd control, whether it be, um, you know, social distancing or just going somewhere, you know, like a, you know, like hiking or trails or somewhere a little bit further up or down the beach where there aren't as many people. And then when we asked our users, what can accommodations, restaurants, and destinations uh, do to, you know, you know, to increase cleanliness and the perception of cleanliness for, you know, for guests, 82% said uh, increased frequency of uh, disinfection of high contact equipment, handrails, doors, things like that. Um, you know, 84% are about, uh, you know, five out of six you know, cleanliness and sanitation, and basically about five out of six for all of these, uh, providing hand sanitizer. I don't know about you, but I know when I walk in somewhere and there's a hand sanitizer pump, it, it's, it's weird. It's like the free candy dish for me now. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Great. Hand sanitizer. I, I don't get it, but it, 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 gives you that, it gives you that warm fuzzy. At least it does me. Um, and then, you know, publicly displaying, you know, uh, clean and sanitation products. Again, this is about five out of six of TripAdvisor users are saying this. So, um, you know, with all that to say, it kind of sets the stage for introducing you to our Travel Safe Initiative. And this is something that we rolled out in, actually we rolled out in, in mid-June. We started uh, with, you know, featuring certain, you know, certain hotels and certain markets. And then we expanded it site-wide after that and expanded into restaurants. And right now, we're in the process of expanding into attractions. So one thing I will tell you about the information I'm going to show you here about, uh, about travel safe is that while it is very factual, it is also very fluid uh, because frankly, the, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic demands this to be a, you know, demands it be a, a fluid uh, program. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of you have seen that same fluidity uh, as you've tried to navigate through and, you know, you know, comply with, local guidance, federal guidance, state guidance, as well as just your own best practices and wanting to take care of, you know, your employees and your staff and your customers, but also, you know, still, you know, still bring in money and still, you know, have that cash register ringing too. So, um, you know, that said, everything that I'm going to show you here, you know, is, you know, is a work in progress as the same way that, that COVID is, unfortunately. Um, but we, you know, we came up with this you know, part of what, you know, what informed us, you know, informed our decision to do this is about two thirds of our users are saying they won't travel until they see physical changes that make them feel safer. Um, you know, I know that the, the small amount that we have traveled that we've done as a family, um, you know, researching what has been done, um, you know, on the destination level or on the, you know, um, the business, individual business or hotel or attraction level has been extremely important. And, you know, I'll say this candidly that um, you know, some of the places that, that I have visited in the last two to three months, uh, and I, I will be very specific and say, this does not include South Carolina, although it may include places we stopped at to and from South Carolina. Um, it was very hard, even for somebody like me who works in the travel sector to really find you know, any sort of, any, any information like this. So there's a real need for this. Um, and, you know, it was until we found some of this information that we didn't feel safe traveling to some places. It, it determined our route that we drove. It determined where we stayed. We actually drove longer because of this, because we felt greater assurances uh, staying in some cities between, you know, between Texas and South Carolina than others. Um, you know, and about two, excuse me, about three quarters of travelers say a checklist of safety measures on TripAdvisor listings would be very or extremely helpful. So this really helped inform it. Um, you know, and in terms of what our users say, you know, what's, what actions can be taken? Uh, and that, you know, goes back to increased frequency of disinfection for high contact places. Three quarters saying that, you know, policies encouraging employees to stay home when sick. Um, you know, I think, 
you know, I think now, I think anytime you, you know, you're out and you hear somebody sneeze, you know, everybody kind of stops. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's almost on par with when you're in a restaurant, you hear a dish break, right? Um, and then, you know, three quarters of our users said that, you know, staff wearing personal protective equipment, you know, masks, gloves, et cetera, et cetera is, um, you know, is going to really be important to them as they're making decisions. So again, this, you know, this data and this research, you know, continue to inform us in, in building this initiative. You know, travelers want to use review information to make decisions. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in greater depth about, you know, about how you can really utilize reviews uh, during COVID-19. Um, you know, about 45% of our users said they would like to filter and only display businesses meeting health and safety guidelines, which is one of the key features of the Travel Safe Initiative. Um, about 40%, you know, two out of five travelers wanted to be asked about safety and cleanliness when they submit a review. And about that same ratio say that travelers should be able to indicate the safety and sanitation measures that the property is undertaking. You know, this is, and this makes sense. I mean, this is a, this is a continuance of what people use TripAdvisor for. You know, it started almost 20 years ago to provide information on what the experience is like, whatever that might be. And, you know, it, it's, you know, whether that be something that's, you know, aesthetic, such as the, you know, the brochure, the picture in the brochure and the, you know, the, you know, the view when you're on site aren't the same or, um, you know, or if it's just something as simple as, you know, the, you know, the cleanliness of the rooms or anything like that. And this is just an extension of that. This is an extension of people wanting that on the ground information by other, you know, by other guests. It's just taking a very serious turn during, you know, during a global pandemic. So this is where our Travel Safe Initiative comes in. Um, you know, we wanted to put travelers' minds at ease, and we wanted to also support you, our partners. And you know, we wanted, you know, we wanted you all to have the ability to really tell guests, "Hey, we're doing everything we can. We're we're in it with you, and here's what we're doing." Um, you know, the one thing that I would encourage, I'm going to mention this a couple of times, uh, you know, just for for repetition, you know, repetition's sake. Um, add your safety measures to, you know, to your listing and your TripAdvisor listing management center. Um, you, know, you can go to tripadvisor.com forward slash owners to get started. This is all free. Um, if, you know, if there's some of you that are out there, you know, out there tuned in right now that you don't, you know, you, your business is listed on TripAdvisor, but you don't have a, um, you know, you don't have an account where you're managing that listing. Go to that, go to that URL right there, tripadvisor.com forward slash owners and claim that listing. It's again, it's free to do. Um, or if you have a business that should be listed, you know, go there and create your listing too. But um, the key to everything I'm going to show you here is that you do need to be registered on the site and be not just registered on, on, on the site, but be recognized as a um, as a representative of your business on TripAdvisor in order to add this stuff. And again, follow that link. Go to tripadvisor.com forward slash owners. The steps are very self-explanatory, and I'm going to give you some um, you know some examples and some you know some tips and tricks too. So um, the way that Travel Safe works is um, you know we use some you know we use a you know information from a lot of you know world health and safety organizations and you know we built a checklist that uh, businesses can use to you know to share their safety measures that they're taking um, you know, if you activate this you know you'll benefit from listing page updates your listing will have you know will we'll have some very obvious branding on there I'll show you some examples of that here in a second uh, to you know to show you that you know you know to show guests or potential visitors that you're taking steps you're you know you're making measures um, there's going to be a search filter for restaurants and, and hotels now. And for what I've heard for attractions and things to do, it's coming. Um, you'll be able to search by, you know, by that filter. And the, you know, the early data that we have is that users are engaging, you know, users who use the search filter for, um, you know, to identify businesses, you know, hotels or restaurants at this stage that are taking active steps uh, after they filter that, their engagement with the results of those filtered search, you know, those, uh, you know, filtered searches 
is about 40% higher than engagement with listings where they are not filtering the search by you know, businesses that are taking those steps. So this is very important to your bottom line. This is, uh, this is extremely important to, to you. Um, you know, you also benefit from travel reviews. You know, travelers, you know, that report they're most interested in feedback from other guests on the current state of safety at each property. Reviews are going to be very key for you here. Um, you know, visitor, you know, you know, to get this information, questions will be added to the review questionnaire to confirm safety at each location. So here's a, you know, here's a brief overview of the checklist. Uh, this disclaimer absolutely applies here, y'all. Um, you know, the safety measures, this checklist, this is, you know, this is the, uh, the checklist for hotels as of, uh, you know, as of a, a while back. We're changing this on a daily basis, a daily, but on an ongoing basis to, you know, to adapt to, you know, to new things that come up with, uh, with COVID. So, um, you know, this will, you know, evolve and change at any time, but you can see some of the key things here, you know, that, you know, you can, as a hotel, is a, you know, a hotel owner, you can, you know, indicate your staff's required to wash hands. You know, there's doctors available 24 hours a day. Um, you know, there's at least a 24 hour gap a vacancy between guests, um, you know, um, temperature checks, contactless check-in and check-out, um, you know, social distancing, and you know, different things like that. Let's see. Um, here's an example of what you know what a listing page would look like. Uh, and this is again, this is some of the you know, this is one of the benefits that you get from registering with Travel Safe. You get a lot of you know, a lot of very you know, very obvious. Uh, signage on your uh, on your listing, for lack of a better better way of saying it, showing um, you know showing that you know you're taking precautions, you're taking steps, and then a whole list of what you're doing. And here's you know here's the search filter, and this is where you know someone you know this example here is somebody searching you know Atlanta hotels, you know they you know just click a box and they can filter proper you know properties taking safety measures. Restaurants. Um, again, this is a, an example of the checklist, but this is a, this is an, a, an ongoing process for sure. Um, you know, single use or sanitized menus. A um, couple of call outs on this checklist here that uh, that restaurants are are being asked to uh, complete. Um, you know, curbside pickup. Um, you know, reservation call ahead seating. Uh, tables disinfected between guests. A lot of things that you know probably you know, most of y'all are doing. And, you know, most of the places that, you know, that, that I've seen are, are doing this. So this is just a way that you can tell people on, on the world's largest travel site where a lot of your customers are coming in from that you're doing the right thing. And here's just how, you know, here's how the travel safe um, branding looks on, looks on a listing. You know, it's, everything's very, you know, very obvious, very, uh, you know, very available to be discovered. And here's how you can filter the search for attractions and experiences. This is a, uh, you know, this is somewhere we're still building this out, but even now there's a checklist of safety measures that are, uh, that are being filled out. The searchability is not there yet, the search function, but uh, the listings are still, you know, very, you know, very obviously labeled. You can see by this example here um, and the, you know, the checklist items are you know are called out so um for those of you who hear from you know from you know from attractions you know definitely you know keep you know keep a you know keep a mindful watch on this because this is something that's going to be beneficial for you so i'm going to take you through some steps on things you can do i'm going to show you some action action steps best practices and a uh, and a pro tip uh, because we've got to find some way to, uh, to, you know, to make the action items all look very different in here, but they are all very pertinent, very relevant for you. Uh, action step number one, you know, we're going to, you know, I'm really going to reinforce this. Go to your management center. If you do not manage your listing, uh, go to tripadvisor.com slash owners, and you can, you know, you can claim your free listing there and then. Very easy process. Um, there is a little bit of you know verification that's done just to make sure that you know that you truly are somebody that should be representing your your business and 
you know, not the uh, competitor across the street or anything like that. Um, step two, you know, when you're, when you're registering for Travel Safe, go to your COVID-19 response center. And this is once you're logged in and you're in your management center for, you know, for your, you know, for your business on TripAdvisor. And, you know, go there, click on share safety details. Step three for travel safe, add your safety measures in a detailed response. Make sure that you check off everything on the checklist, but also make sure that you share more details about your property's responses. Uh, you know, you can even put contact information for people to reach out to you. Um, you know, but make sure that you're putting that information in there because there may be things about your, your business that make you, you know, that make you unique or, you know, that aren't covered in some of those check boxes up there. Um, the other thing I would say too is check back regularly. As I touched on just a few minutes ago, there are, uh, you know, these, you know, the checklists and the, you know, the travel safe policies and um, features are, you know, are very fluid and they are, you know, they're subject to change as the, you know, as the pandemic does. So check back frequently to make sure that there, you know, that, that you know, any new features or, you know, a new box that you could potentially check off, um, you know, hasn't appeared, in, you know, without your knowledge. So best practices on, you know, adding the safety measures, you know, one, select the safety measures that apply to your business. Two, use the free form text box to provide more details. Uh, you can even include links to your website. So there's, you know, a, a side, side effect here of, uh, you know, capturing a little more site traffic. You know, make sure you, uh, you know, if you do link to your site, make sure you link to a relevant page, you know, for, you know, for COVID-19. But, um, you know, that's another, you know, another benefit of this. Uh, and, you know, three, I mentioned this earlier, update the information regularly. Um, you know, as this, you know, as everything develops and updates, make sure that you're, you know, that you're, addressing those things too, or maybe is, um, you know, maybe you pass into a different phase or a different stage of, uh, you know, of recovery, or there's, you know, um, you know, local or state governmental mandates that are lifted. Uh, make sure that you update to, uh, you know, to mention those things if, uh, you know, if they're, you know, if they're on your listing now. Um, you know, and the opportunity here for you is really to rebuild traveler confidence. Um, you know, position your property as a safe option to, you know, to travel or seeking reassurance, um, you know, and then you get to, you know, leverage the reach and scale of TripAdvisor to, you know, to highlight your property. We have hundreds of millions of visitors on the site every month. Uh, and I can tell you the, you know, the, you know, you know, the region itself there, the Grand Strand region uh, has been one of the most viewed and searched regions in the U.S. through COVID-19. So this is, you know, this is especially important to you all. And this is, you know, I would say it's, it's searched more and gets more views than a lot of other competing coastal destinations um, across the entire Southeastern US. Um, but definitely, you know, definitely make sure that you, that you do this. I'll give, you, I'll give you a little bit of a case study. I was talking to uh, just earlier this week, I was talking to one of my uh, destination partners at a uh, uh, convention of visitors bureau in, in another state, um, and they were, you know, they were saying that you know some of their local hoteliers and hotel partners were mentioning that they weren't getting as many bookings uh, from TripAdvisor in the last few weeks, and and they weren't saying that compared to this time last year or something, you know, something rather obvious like that. But then it had dropped off a little bit, even though the site traffic was up. Um, when I did a quick search on the site, this particular city has 27 hotels in it. And when I did a search and I checked the box for only properties that are taking safety precautions, 26 of those 27 properties fell off of the search results. And so my guidance to them was get your partners to, you know, to come in and take a few minutes updating their listing. They will see an increase. You know, the, uh, the story of that increase is still to be determined because this is literally a couple of days old. But, uh, but I fully believe that the fact that one out of 27 of their properties had taken the time to do this had a direct impact on the, you know, the drop in referral, you know, referral site business and, you know, and bookings attributable to TripAdvisor that they had seen prior to that. I'm going to show you a fourth action step. And this is, um, 
it's it's related to, but it's not directly a part of the Travel Safe Initiative. But I feel like this is important, and this is uh, you know this is something you know, I do uh, reputation management you know webinars and um, in person seminars. Some of y'all may have seen me uh, in the North Myrtle or Myrtle Beach in the last year or two doing these. Um, but update your TripAdvisor listing. I think it's especially important now to do that uh, because frankly, a lot of things have changed. I mean, you know, one of the things that I, that I advise people when I talk to them about reputation management is to update your information as you build or add on, or if you have, you know, a, a degree of seasonality to what your business offers or when it's open or closed. This is pretty much in line with that. You know, there's a lot of things that have changed and make sure that your listing reflects those changes so that people don't show up disappointed or, you know, worse yet, they don't show up at all because they don't know that you're, you're taking steps or they don't know that you have a particular offering. Um, you know, update your amenities, add new management photos. This is, you know, this is something that comes right out of, you know, of crisis management tips that I give to people after a natural disaster or anything else, like, you know, like a hurricane or an earthquake or anything like that is to, you know, post photos, you know, post recent photos, even if you don't want to address COVID directly in those photos or anything like that, you know, post pictures that, um, you know, that are dated, you know, July, you know, July, 2020, August, 2020. Um, you know, if you, you know, if you have, you know, photos that feature, you know, featured guests, you know, show, you know, show how far apart they are. Um, you know, show, you know, if you've got a lot of space in your business or in your property, show that too. Um, respond to reviews. This is something that's important anytime, but I think it's especially important now. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who have, a, you know, who have a lot of questions and there's a lot of confusion out there. And what you can do by responding to reviews is to show that someone cares, someone who is interested in a good experience, a healthy, safe experience. Is, is mining the store. Um, lastly, answer traveler questions. Uh, one of the things that I see as a, as a TripAdvisor user, uh, I'll speak to this real, you know, real briefly, is um, I'll get notification emails saying, you know, so-and-so has a question about this hotel you reviewed. You know, can you help? And you know, that'll pull me in to hopefully be able to come in and answer it. But, you would be surprised how many businesses I've seen just from receiving those notification emails from, uh, from TripAdvisor of places that I've reviewed before uh, where management has not answered or has not replied to questions. Um, you know, so I would really encourage you to take a few minutes to look at your listings, um, you know, traveler questions because uh, there's a lot of people that are, if they're asking questions there, they're probably pretty close to booking or maybe they have booked or purchased and are you know, maybe having a second thought because they haven't, you know, they haven't been able to check something off of their COVID checklist, so to speak. And a pro tip, uh, you know, have your guests tell your story. Um, you know, make review collection a priority. People are going to be looking for more recent reviews. Um, you know, use you know, review collection tools to help. There's a ton of them with your management center. Uh, and remind your guests to write reviews, you know. There, there's nothing wrong with asking, uh, you know, asking for the review with, you know, with, you know, especially now, you know, a, a lot of travelers are, you know, certainly empathetic with, you know, with the challenges of, of COVID-19, uh, especially within the travel sector and heck, just about every other sector. So, you know, just a, you know, a, a brief, you know, a brief ask when somebody's leaving or checking out to say, you know, hey, if you don't mind, take a minute to, to review us on TripAdvisor. It really, you know, it, it's really helping our business. Um, you know, there's so many people that are, you know, really tuned into that. And I'm sure a lot of you, when you think about if, you know, if you were, um, you know, in a, you know, in a, in a local business or doing business with somebody, and they said, hey, can you do this one thing for me? It's going to really help me. Uh, you probably would do it, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it, so it resonates. Um, so that's what I've got, you know, I'm just going to kind of summarize everything. We got some time afterwards here for questions. Please feel free, you know, um, post the questions here in the chat and we'll, you know, we'll address them. Um, but here we go, you know, just to, you know, just to kind of wrap it up, 
Um, you know, from the research portion, you know, trips of a shorter distance in length are trending right now. Um, you know, visible signs of cleanliness are important to travelers. Uh, and far, as far as the Travel Safe Initiative, access your management center. Again, tripadvisor.com forward slash owners. If you have not claimed your listing on the site, now more than ever, it is extremely important to do so. And again, it's free. Um, you know, the, the thing I would say to that is if you have an opportunity to own pages of content on a site that has hundreds of millions of potential customers on it every month, why, why wouldn't you? Um, you know, if you, if you have a Facebook page for your business and, and you're, you know, travel and tourism, especially you should have a, you should have a, a, a trip advisor listing that you manage and you, you know, that you are able to respond to and post your photos on, uh, share your safety details and add detailed responses to that. Uh, and then update your listing. You know, if things have changed, uh, as things change, <laughs> make sure that your, uh, that your information is current. So that's what I've got there. And again, this presentation will be made available afterwards. So, um, you know, you'll be able to access every, you know, every bit of what we've shared today. Um, and from here, I'm going to take it to, uh, I'm going to take it to Q and A. Let's see. Okay. So in turn, yeah. So we got one question here about the, yeah, with the presentation deck, yeah, Caroline, you um, you responded to that. Yeah, that, I'm going to make the deck available to uh, to the chamber. So uh, correspond with uh, correspond with them, and they'll be able to get you a copy of it. They'll get a uh, uh, a link to the presentation sent out to them this afternoon, and we'll be able to um, you know distribute that to you all as uh, as you request. Excellent question, Karen. Um, are travelers asking a lot of questions about mask ordinances on TA, on TripAdvisor? Yes, there, people are asking a lot of questions about masks. I know, um, you know, masks are a hotly debated topic in some cases, uh, but people, uh, you know, people are asking a, a lot about, about masks and what, uh, you know, what the laws are, you know, in some cases. And that's, you know, that's something that's, um, that you see sometimes in, in our uh, city forums pages for individual destinations, people will ask, you know, am I going to be required to, to wear a mask or, or, you know, are there going to be, you know, are other people around me going to be required to wear a mask? So yeah, people, people are asking a lot about that. And I would encourage you again, um, for those of you who are business owners, monitor the questions section of your listing, you know, and you will, you know, there's a good chance you might see it pop up there. Um, but also for those of you all with, uh, you know, with the uh, DMOs, um, monitor your town, uh, monitor their uh, uh, forums page because there's, you know, there, there might be questions about that there too that you can also head off. So next question, are you seeing a lot of videos and photos showing the cleaning products and practices? Um, a little bit. You know, there's, it's, it's a, it's a fine line. A lot of people you know, you know, who have a background in, you know, PR and communications, you know, try to stay away from obviously addressing an issue in, in their, in their communications efforts, but still addressing it to, to ease, uh, you know, to, to kind of ease the, uh, the challenges. So I'm seeing, I, I'm seeing kind of a mixed bag with that. I'm seeing a lot of people that are, you know, posting content and videos that imply that, and, you know, we're seeing some people that, you know, that, that are, I can't, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, but there are, there are people that are posting that and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of destinations are posting that information. You know, um, you know, here's, you know, here's what, you know, here's the, uh, you know, the guidelines and, you know, in our city or in our county for, you know, for clean or here's what we have, you know, we've asked our partners to commit to uh, for, you know, for the safety of, of, you know, of, you know, visitors to our town and, you know, I've seen a lot more of it there on the destination side, but I don't think it would be a bad thing if a business posted, um, you know, images or videos of, you know, of cleaning practices. But, um, you know, my opinion, don't let that dominate the content that you're posting either. Any other questions?
what are the unique challenges for attractions as it relates to sanitation? Um, very good question because that is, uh, you know, attractions, you know, that's, that's parks, that's, uh, that's museums, that's, um, you know, theme parks, you know, thing, you know, things like that. You know, the one thing that I've seen, uh, I'll speak to this with anybody that has exhibits. Uh, and this is a real, you know, you know, a, kind of a loss for, you know, anywhere that caters to kids. Uh, anything that's, that's tactile, that's hands-on, has either been removed or has had, you know, plexiglass added around it. Um, any hands-on sort of exhibits or features um, are, are no longer hands-on, whether that means they're just removed or, um, you know, or just not, uh, you know, no longer made uh, touchable by, you know, by virtue of a, uh, you know, like plexiglass barrier or something like that being added. Um, you know, distancing is, you know, is, is uh, obviously huge. Uh, and then the masks. Are we still seeing travelers wanting those experiences during COVID? So to speak to the types of experiences that, that travelers are looking for during COVID, um, outdoors reigns supreme. Um, we're starting to see a resurgence in interest in all types of attractions, but outdoors are by and large the, you know, the, the activities that, that people are the most interested in. Uh, and it, you know, it makes sense because it, you know, it outdoors suggests a greater, you know, a greater degree of distance. So for those of you who have indoor attractions, um, you know, that means you get a little bit of homework to do to, you know, to, to make sure that you can show that you are, you know, operating safely, even though you have an enclosed environment, but outdoor attractions, uh, beaches, especially, uh, any, any sort of outdoor activity, like, you know, parks or hiking as well. But, um, yeah, they're still wanting those experiences. They're still wanting to do things, but yeah, outdoors where, you know, where they feel like they're going to be able to have better control over their distance from other people and, you know, be able to, you know, you know, get it, you know, get out and bolt if they don't feel safe, I guess. So, yeah. So what about the desire for, for outdoor patio seating for restaurants? That's huge. I mean, one of the examples for, you know, for outdoor seating for restaurants, um, you know, I believe it was uh, in Florida, you know, it was uh, Tampa or St. Pete, um, you know, where they took, you know, one of their main, uh, you know, one of their main attraction areas, one of their, you know, main visitation areas there, you know, where um, locals and visitors go out and they converted two lanes of the road into outdoor seating. So, uh, a lot of interest in that, um, you know, I can say as somebody here in Texas where it's going to be a, you know, frosty 95 here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that, um, you know, shade and cooling are also, um, you know, some things that you, you, know, you want to be aware of with, uh, you know, with, you know, in terms of, you know, fans and, um, you know, especially shade, you know, umbrellas and, and, you know, things along those lines. But yeah, there's a, there's definitely, um, Definitely an increased interest, but the heat can play a factor in that for obvious reasons. You're welcome. Absolutely. Any other any other questions from the uh, from the group here? All right. All right. Well, um, I've got a couple minutes still. I've uh, got plenty of time. If anybody is still uh, still interested or you know has any uh, has any questions, glad to help. But if not, um, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, it's it's very fulfilling to be able to do this and to be able to um, you know speak to speak to you guys and. You know, my hope and my intention, my goal from our time together today is that, uh, you know, is that you will, you know, be able to walk away from this time with at least one new thing you can implement with something that is going to benefit your business, that is going to help you, um, you know, stay, you know, stay in a good place with your business financially, personally, health, health-wise, in every other way. Um, so, 
if any of you have taken that away from this today, then I am, I am a happy man and I am very grateful. And yeah, so thank you. Again, thank you very much for the time. That was great information. And I think it does reinforce a lot of the things that uh, I know the chambers and the DMOs here in the Grand Strand have been really working on um, very hard with, with all of our CVB partners. We know, and you've just validated how important the, the traveling safely is to uh, potential visitors as, as we try to welcome them back. So um, very good information, very concrete, and we really appreciate your time today, Scott. Thank you. Absolutely. Before, Thank you very much. Before yes. we, one person did just um, do a question in the Q and A button below, if you can see that. Yes. Yeah. I just I just saw that. So, how can I find and fill out the form you recommend? Uh, that's going to be accessible through the management center for your listing on TripAdvisor. So, if you are already managing your uh, your listing on TripAdvisor, then just log into there like you normally would, and it, and it will be there. Um, if not, if you are not, um, if, if you are not currently managing it, then go to uh, www.tripadvisor.com forward slash owners, and, and that link is there in the, uh, in the uh, presentation deck too. Terrific. Great. Again, that's awesome. And thanks everybody for spending a little bit of time with Scott today, um, learning, and uh, we'll be sure, sure to share this with you. We've been recording and uh, we'll get it out to everyone and your colleagues as well if they weren't able to uh, make it live. But um, hopefully we'll all log on to our TripAdvisor listings and get them updated and get the most recent photos and info out there um, so that we can reassure uh, our, our travelers who are, are looking at us and thinking about coming to visit us. So thanks again, and we will talk to everybody soon. Have a great day.